So today we get to talk about Rick Tyler. He's a white Christian nationalist who's running for Congress in Tennessee. And this one has no bones about showing his racism. He literally put this sign up. And then when I went to his website, I don't recommend. He also talks about these things. Frame. We have gone from an 85% supermajority in America to a dwindling 60%. Indeed, the future appears grim for that great and noble Caucasian race, which has been so blessed and favored by Almighty God. He may yet save us, but only if we are willing to... F well, I went to his website anyway, found some pretty polarizing stuff. Rick Tyler is running for two offices, Tennessee's 3rd Congressional District and Governor. I am confident that this guy won't be elected to either position for three reasons. One, he's been running for office unsuccessfully for over 10 years and always gets less than 2% of the vote. Two, he's running as an independent, which we all know only fractures larger parties' votes a tiny bit. And three, Tennessee is staunchly Republican, and they vote for more well-known Republicans like the Governor Bill Lee. So I'm not afraid of Rick Tyler getting a position of power. What bothers me most is that the Republican Party echoes his white Christian nationalism in its rhetoric more and more. Both Rick and the Republican Party are inspired by Trump and believe a new world order is conspiring against them. And most importantly, both are denying they are racist while using racism to fuel hate in as many ways as possible. A major party should not be this closely aligned with someone who says this. You see, at some point, the white race must unite in solidarity and fight for its very security and survival. We are rapidly running out of places to which we can retreat. Makes you wonder, who's influencing who? I think the Republican Party is very malleable right now because they are weighing their decisions on the demands of a violently angry base and dear leader Trump's whims. They're afraid of fatal, physical, or political retaliation because it's already happened on January 6th. And two Republicans who participated in the investigation into January 6th. Personal political power is everything in America, and so Republican leadership will do anything for it. That means deranged bigots like Rick Tyler have more say. And in case you haven't noticed, non-whites are not overly adept, kind, or benevolent, when either through affirmative action or outright capitulation on the part of whites, such as in South Africa, they gain the upper hand. Typically, white genocide will wind up being the natural outgrowth of such a tragedy. So, so white genocide. His language is that of a general's, and that's on purpose. Extreme Christian skinheads like Rick Tyler want to rile up the opposition to the point of deadly fighting. It's part of the Armageddon. They would love to be able to take out black people or even just Democrats en masse. And their existence as a collective depends on having an other to fight. Otherwise, they have to look inward and accept their own flaws. The benevolent, patient white majority is trying to make room for diversity, but non-white people just aren't wired for gratitude. He has conjured imagery of uncouth savages, not of Western culture or Israelite blood, who only want to dominate the white race or destroy it because savages don't forgive. Look at what Rick and his delusional friends believe, and let's side-by-side -side it with what Republicans spend their time legislating on. The neo-Nazis want to secede from the Union. Southern Republicans, polled last June for the most part, want out of the Union too. And Texas got so fed up with democracy, they created a referendum, pinky promise, to secede if necessary. Rick and friends oppose interracial marriage. Race mixing requires penalty of death to them. And so you would be okay with the Supreme Court leaving the question of interracial marriage to the states? Yes, I think that that's something that uh, if you're not wanting the Supreme Court to weigh in on issues like that, uh, you're not going to be able to have your cake and eat it too. Neo-Nazis on January 6th were donning Confederate logos and spitting the N-word at officers, all the while believing that majority black cities stole the 2020 election. Yet another black officer later told me he had been cr confronted by insurrectionists in the Capitol who told him, put your gun down and we'll show you what you really are. Trump pressured big cities and swing states to stop counting votes where he was losing. And now, Republican legislatures are reducing the number of ballot drop-off boxes in urban areas and requiring driver's licenses as voter ID. 
Hmm. Crazies like Rick Tyler want more deportation to reduce non-white racial proliferation. They believe immigration policies are subsidizing minority birth rates. The Trump administration implemented a travel ban based on religion, didn't want people coming to the U.S. from whole countries. And now Florida, Texas, and Arizona are busing migrants to northern cities as a stunt, and some will just show their white nationalist colors. No sane country would allow millions of foreign nationals to walk across its borders illegally and then immediately give them government benefits in exchange for mocking our rule of law. This is our country. We were born here. We plan to die here. We have nowhere else to go, and we don't want to live in a slum. To the people who follow conservatism, MAGA, and the Republican Party, but don't want to be called racist, your leaders either believe or are cynical enough about democracy that they co-opt hate-based Christian identity politics. How will they and you act when whites inevitably become a plurality rather than outright majority?